Good day everyone. In today's video, we will be discussing statistical modeling and visualization. Here are the topics to be covered in this video. Let us first define statistics. Statistics is a set of mathematical techniques for characterizing and interpreting data. Statistics are used in almost every scientific discipline, including the physical and social sciences, as well as business and humanities, government, and manufacturing. Statistics is fundamentally a branch of applied mathematics that arose from the application of mathematical tools such as calculus and linear algebra to the theory of probability. In certain situations, statistical research provides managers with the information they need to make sound decisions. Managers use statistical research to make decisions in areas such as auditing, financial analysis, and marketing research. There are two types of statistical methods, descriptive and inferential. Descriptive statistics, uh, which focuses on sample data central tendency, variability, and distribution and inferential statistics, which are tools used by statisticians to draw conclusions about the characteristics of a population from the characteristics of a sample and determine how certain they can be of the reliability of those conclusions. There are different ways of measuring central tendency of a set of values. First, let me discuss descriptive statistics, measures of central tendency. This includes mean, basically the average of given numbers, median, which is the number in between, and mode, which is the most frequent observation. There are multiple ways to calculate the mean. Here are the two most popular ones the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean. Now, arithmetic mean is the sum of all the values in a set of numbers divided by the number of numbers in a set. It is computed in the following manner, as given or as shown in this slide. Next is the geometric mean, which is the nth root of the product of all the numbers in a set. The geometric mean formula is as follows. Now, geometric mean which takes into account the volatility and compounding effects of returns. As a result, the geometric average yields a more accurate calculation of the average return. Let's take this as an example. There are 9 given values, 1, 2, 3, 5, 0, 4, 5, 9, and 3. To get the mean, we have to add all the given numbers and divide, this, uh, divide all the numbers or the sum with 9 since there are 9 values given. This will give us a result of 3.55. Therefore, our mean, sorry, uh, the result will uh, yield to 3.77. Therefore, our mean will be 3.77. From the given values, the median is 0, since it is the number between the given numbers of 1, 2, 3. Our mode resulted to 3, since the number 3 appeared the most in the given values. The next is descriptive statistics measures of dispersion. This includes calculations from dispersion, range, 
variance, mean absolute deviation or MAD, standard deviation or SD, quartiles, box, and whiskers plot. Now, all of these calculations can be done using Microsoft Excel. Okay, let us first discuss this, uh, dispersion. Now, dispersion is a measure of the difference between items. This technique is used by researchers because it determines the reliability of the average. Dispersion is also useful for comparing two or more series. The next is range. Now, range is a straightforward measure of dispersion defined as the difference between the largest and the smallest value. Given is the formula for calculating range. Next, we have variance. Variance, which is, which is known as the square of the standard deviation. And mean absolute deviation, which is the average absolute deviation from the mean. The slide shows the formulas for variance and mean absolute deviation. The next is the standard deviation and quartiles. Now, standard deviation is a method for determining the degree of variability in data for both a sample and a population, while quartiles is a division of observations into four defined intervals based on the data values and how they compare to the entire set of observations. Lastly, we have the box and whiskers plot. Now, box and whiskers plot is a method for summarizing data measured on an interval scale. It is extremely useful when comparing two or more data sets with a large number of observations. Next, we have the descriptive statistics shape of distribution. Now, shape of distribution includes histogram, skewness, and kurtosis. Histogram or histogram is a graphical representation that divides a set of data points into user-defined ranges. The histogram, which resembles a bar graph in appearance, condenses a data series into a or into an easy interpreted visual by taking many data points and grouping them into local or logical ranges or bins. Next is skewness, which is the measure of the asymmetry of a histogram, and kurtosis, which is a measure of the tail's combined weight in relation to the rest of the distribution. The kurtosis value increases as the tail of the distribution becomes heavier. The next statistical tool that is used is the regression. Now, regression is a collection of statistical method for estimating the relationship between a dependent variable and one or more independent variables. It can be assessed that strength of the relationship between variables and to forecast their future relationship. For the sake of this video, we will only discuss two types of regression, the linear and the multiple linear regression. Now, the linear regression is a model that evaluates the relationship between a dependent and an independent variable, while multiple linear regression is the analysis of essentially similar to the simple linear model with the exception that multiple independent variables are used in the model. Given are the uh, formulas used for linear and multiple linear regression. Next, we have the time series forecasting. Now, the time series forecasting is a statistical technique for dealing the time series data. 
also known as trend analysis. Time series data is data that is organized in a series of specific time periods or intervals. There are three types of data to consider. First, we have the time series data, which is a set of observations on the values that are variable takes at different times. The number two or second is the cross-sectional data where data is one or or where data of one or more variables are collected at the same time or same point in time. And lastly, we have the pooled data, which is a combination of time series data and cross-sectional data. We now go to business report. In an evaluation of a particular issue or set of circumstances or financial operations that relate to the performance of a business, its main purpose is to communicate relevant information uh, sufficiently and efficiently. It is often written in response to an executive to or of the company and often takes the form of a memo with the report attached. We define business reports as a written document containing information about business matters. Its uh, primary goal is to communicate pertinent information in a concise and efficient manner. It is frequently written in response to a company's executive and often takes a form of memo with the report attached as mentioned earlier. There are three types of business reports. Uh, first is the metric management reports, which helps manage business performance through metrics. Next is dashboard type reports, which is a graphical presentation of several performance indicators in a single page using dials or gauges. And number three, Balance scorecard type reports, which includes financial customer, business process, and learning and growth indicators. Next is the data visualization. Data visualization is the depiction of information in a pictorial or graphical format. It allows decision makers to see analytics visually presented allowing them to grasp difficult concepts or identify new patterns. Now, there are different uses of data visualization. Using charts or graphs to visual, uh, visualize large amounts of complex data is easier than poring over spreadsheets or reports because of the way the human brain processes information. Now, data visualization is a quick and easy way to convey universal concepts. And you can experiment with different scenarios by making minor changes. Now, here are some of the uses of data visualization. First is, identify areas that need attention or improvement. Second, clarify which factors influence customer behavior. Third, help you understand which product to place where, and lastly, predict sales volumes. We now go to our last topic, which is uh, performance dashboard. Now, what is a performance dashboard? A performance dashboard combines two powerful disciplines business intelligence, and performance management. A performance dashboard is a layered information delivered system that delivers information to users on demand in order for them to measure, monitor, and manage business processes and achieve strategic goals. It is made up of three trees. There are three types of applications. Monitor, analysis, and management. 
three data layers, which is graphical, dimensional, and transactional, and the three dash dashboard types, which is operational, tactical, and strategic. Now, by making data open and accessible, the performance dashboard promotes transparency and aids in the improvement of services. The performance dashboard collects and presents services or service data in a consistent and structured format. Now, performance dashboards are important so that uh, here uh, reasons. So, number one, we make the uh, quick data-driven decision about how to improve services. Second, compare data across multiple organization services. And third, be open and transparent to the public about the performance of the organization's services. And that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.